Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second Ask Creator Chat. This one is on IT led citizen development. Today, as always, we have Praveen, our founder at AppSheet, and now a distinguished engineer at Google Cloud. And our guest today is Richard Glass, the director of IT for KLB Construction and a no code app creator. First, some housekeeping um, to our audience to optimize your view. Engagement tools are resizable and movable, so you can fit um, the video to be the size that you want. For the best viewing experience, we recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any other programs or browser sessions you have running in the background. If you have anyone else in your house streaming video, some kids watching TV, that would be a you know a good thing to shut off as well. The webcast is being streamed through your computer, so there's no dial-in number. For the best audio quality, please make sure your computer speakers or headset are turned on and the volume is up. Um, at any time during our live session, you can ask questions in the Q&A tool. Uh, we recommend not waiting until the end. And if you have any technical issues, try refreshing the screen or logging in and out. Okay, um, Praveen, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Nancy. Um, and hi, everyone. I'm delighted to have Richard Glass with us today. Richard, uh, welcome and thank you for your time with us. Hi, Praveen, my pleasure. Glad to be here. Um, long time AppSheet user and creator. So. Yes, Richard is a long time uh, um, friend of the platform. I think it's probably been uh, maybe five years ago that I heard about a company called KLB Construction and this guy Richard Glass who was starting to use our platform. So um, uh, it's been a wonderful collaboration. I should say a little bit about Richard. Actually, I should let Richard um, talk a bit about KLB Construction, the company, and uh, his role there as director of IT. Richard? Great. Yeah, my name is Richard Glass. I'm director of IT for KLB Construction. We're a privately held, mid-sized construction company here in the Northwest. Um, we work on a lot of heavy highway construction projects, such as um, interstate, well, we have I-5 running through the Northwest, 405. And right now we're building out a lot of the sound transit um, light rail projects here in the area. Yeah, so it's sort of, um, I'm not in the construction business myself, but um, I'm in the construction of software, not real construction. Um, um, but as I understand it, you know, it's heavy equipment, um, excavation, building the underlying infrastructure that sits on the roads and bridges and tunnels and um, uh, all of the uh, all of the transportation infrastructure that's um, being built out here in this part of the world. Is that right, Richard? Correct. So we have a, a lot of equipment um, that we need to keep track of, people, as well as other resources and AppSheet has kind of been a, a great partner to help us create the underlying infrastructure that, that allows us to keep track of those things. Could you tell us a bit, Richard, about um, just sort of the set of responsibilities you have as director of IT for KLB Construction? What sorts of things do you manage? Um, how broad are the range of things you have to worry about, think about, anticipate? Sure. Um, so first off, there's internet access for all of our remote locations, field operations, as well as the main headquarters here in Linwood, Washington. Um, so beyond that, there's devices, mobile, tablets, phones, um, training of users. Um, uh, we, we are pretty lean in terms of the company, in terms of uh, how we hire and operate, but we have a small IT staff that assists me, um, and a little bit with the app development as well. So um, we have we have created our apps with an underlying database that's hosted by Google Cloud. So various cloud implementations from our accounting software to um, to these various apps are also under my domain. Um, we're, we're growing just like the rest of the, the industry in learning new tools, um, even 3D models, uh, machine control is a new kind of aspect that we've taken on using drones in the field for measurements. That's also new, but um, yeah, the construction company is catching up in terms of technology use. 
Now, uh, would you say, Richard, that on the spectrum of construction companies and um, IT folk at construction companies, do you think of yourself as an outlier in terms of um, uh, how innovative you are, how much you're open to embracing technology, or do you see this happening across the industry as this is now becoming the norm that construction companies uh, have to stay on the cutting edge of IT in order to improve their operations? So we're, we're probably uh, on the leading edge. The people in general are, are reluctant to adopt new technology. Some of it is, is forced on them, like um, we do a lot of trucking and um, in the industry, tracking your trucking fleet with GPS has been kind of the standard now. But we were, we had started over 10 years ago. Um, so, but just to be competitive, folks are having to adopt this new technology. Um, we've had some projects where machine control and loading 3D models into the various um, earth movers, we would not have been able to complete a project without that technology. Um, and seeing drones for uh, measurements, doing uh, topographical measurements with, with drones and using that to submit to owners for payment, that is, that's, a new, that's kind of a new thing, but we're seeing other, other people in the industry adopt it as well. So that sounds very interesting. I mean, tell me about your, um, how you thought about the use of mobile devices, which is of course now, you know, uh, you probably started five, somewhere from five to 10 years ago, and how that evolved from starting with devices and moving to your building custom apps on top of them. Um, that's a really interesting journey that you're ahead of the curve, but now a lot of other people are entering that phase. I think what we saw was that the software companies that generally service the industry were not early adopters in terms of mobile app development. And we had migrated from a BlackBerry company to Apple iOS devices. And those devices had a lot more opportunities to, for data entry than we did with the Blackberries. And, and so we we're kind of in this interim phase about uh, six, seven years ago where we wanted something to, to leverage those devices and collect the data remotely from, from users. Um, and we tried a few from our, our normal vendors that just, um, <laughs> they, they tend to be clunky and non-intuitive. Um, but luckily we were able to find AppSheet six years ago or so, and we've been able to grow with AppSheet in terms of functionality and, and the types of apps that we, that we offer to folks. Um, really push, I mean, we're seeing now a lot of, as the cameras get better on these devices, just the quality of the photos and the, the information that we're collecting in the field has just gotten a lot better. Okay. Maybe could you describe just sort of a couple of the, um, uh, a couple of kind of things that you do with these apps, um, the information you collect, and then what you do with them at the back office when you bring them back? Sure, I'll kind of give you a general overview of our architecture. Um, so the IT department manages all the underlying data in the apps, and then we can give out uh, give access to the apps through through AppSheet's uh, user permissions. But there's some administrative parts that we had to do internally. So there's a job um, things that we track could include things like projects, jobs, the employee, and equipment. Those are three kind of basic things that we need to collect for all of our apps. So. Internally inside the main office, there are folks that just manage through a little admin app, those types of data, data, data tables. But with those tables, then we can push those to any of the apps that we use in the field. And it creates a conduit that we never had before in terms of like what the office knows and what the field, what the field knows. And it, it's like a, an ability for now, like all of, our, all of our equipment and all of our people, all of our jobs are now documented for the field to, to take advantage of. Um, our product's also broken down into like things like bid items that we track or phase codes. And that typically had been a project manager level type information list. And now we can, we can keep up to date with the folks in the field. And there's some other safety issues too that have changed, in, especially in Washington State, that we've been able to adapt with AppSheet for that. So that could be a training, training aspects as well as alerting when there's issues on site. Now, how did you do this before you had your custom apps? How did you keep all this, uh, how did you collect the data and how did you make sure it was uh, clean and all of that? It was very paper driven. So 
in the back of our main office here in Linwood, we actually have a, a mailbox that's shaped like a bulldozer. And people would physically drop off the paper in that mailbox. <laughs> when it was after hours or whatnot when the office wasn't open. So any, I would actually go check to see what types of things showed up in that, that mailbox. And those were the, the targets that I would try to, in terms of create a digital equivalent. So things like dailies, uh, time cards, uh, a, a daily is basically a foreman's record of what happened on site that day, and time cards, obviously. But it could be it could be invoices that happen to show up in the field as well. So anything, any of the paperwork that we had that was being handwritten was a uh, was a target for creating a digital app for. So that's really interesting in two dimensions. There's an obvious dimension, which is automating paper-based processes. I mean, particularly in the Northwest here where it rains all the time, um, you know, you really want to get rid of paper-based processes. But um, yeah. the second thing that's sort of subtle in that is what you said, that you would go and check that box, check that mailbox to see um, what are people actually submitting. And that's really interesting because you're being driven by... The decisions, it sounds like, that you were making in terms of what apps to build were not driven by some committee sitting in a room and saying, here's what we believe should be built, but it was based on um, actual observation of what might be useful. It seems right, very bottom-up and, yeah. Well, I was going to say, there, there is, like, I mean, I, like everyone, we all have bosses, and I, there's executives here within the company, but um, we have a lot of autonomy and leeway in terms of, like, um, what we want to do to streamline our processes. And so if there were no red flags, they, they were definitely in the loop, but um, they could see the benefits too, because what had, what might have been paperwork that was, you know, being turned into a mailbox or maybe just existed in a binder on site, managers and executives were now getting information that they didn't have before in almost real time, um, whether it was pictures or, or job site progress. Everybody in the company or at these levels can now look at what another job is doing without even having to visit the job. That is a pattern I see a lot, which is it starts out with data collection, but there are sort of this close companion of data collection is the reporting and analytics that um, uh, are shared with the folks who have to understand how things are going overall. And... Um, it's, it's really, you can't do the analytics without the accurate data, and the accurate data is valuable only because it also helps with the analytics. So it's a, uh, you were actually one of the first customers to make that obvious to us as a company building some of this uh, platform, that this was an important connection. Oh, yeah. The, um, it, just getting people more information. Like, uh, I, I generally try to break it down, like, even with the admin apps, like, Who's generating the data? And by putting the app in their hands, they're sharing firsthand knowledge of the data and making it accessible throughout the company. It's been a big leap from just you know, having the, the various forms of paper that were out there. Now, what sort of uh, features do some of your apps have? I take it they would capture images, do maps, charts, um, maybe uh, scanning codes. Uh, could you just touch on a few of the things that some of these apps have just to get a sense of the complexity? Sure. So um, one of our uh, most fundamental apps is the field app that has those table of data that I mentioned, job sites, um, people, and equipment. And we sometimes have, in some positions, have quite a bit of turnover. So um, the shop has like a parts runner. And every time we get a new parts runner, they have to learn where all the jobs are. Well, the app has the location of the job. So it will have <clears throat> the location of the, of the trailers, the job site entrances, and you need, someone who has never worked at KLB can open that app and know where to go. And that has been, like, it just in terms of being more efficient, that's been a big plus. Um, other apps that we've done might, t might touch on safety. So we have all sorts of new safety initiatives that happen. Um, some are determined by labor and industries. Um, we now do a safety walk on our job sites with an operator and a labor representative. So a foreman will walk the job site and identify safety items that are of concern. 
And that app will then push the data to the safety manager who can review what happened on the walk and make comments almost in real time. So, so we have job set information, we have safety, and then we also have um, production. So how, how much work was done on the job site? And before it was very text-based, and now we have, we have the, um, the actual tracking quantities, but now we also have the picture that documented as well. Got it. So this is so. If we can sort of almost pivot, so these are the applications that have been useful for the business. Now, as a director of IT, you also have responsibilities and um, uh, around sort of the uh, where the data lives and protecting that and uh, that class of issues. Can we talk a bit about that? Where does your data live, and how do you make sure that it's secure? Sure, it's, it's been a bit of an evolution over the last five, six years. Um, originally, we were using spreadsheets, and um, those went to Google Sheets. But in the last three years, we have been host using Google, a Google-hosted uh, MySQL database. And so that database, one, is restricted by, by the Google Cloud security, and it's also, we use AppSheet as kind of like our middle layer of security as well. So AppSheet has access to it. You know, a few people within the company have access to it. But everything has to be authenticated through the Google Business Suite. So Google's OAuth 2 authentication platform. So we are very we feel very secure that, that our data is is not generally accessible across the internet. Um, and then and we can put more things in it. So and all your users uh, who work with the applications all sign in to use the application so you know who's using, who's doing what? I presume it's um, it's locked down to your employees? Sure. So we, we limit it to our domain within Google for the most part. And then some, some of the admin type apps are limited on a per user basis. But all of it uses the underlying Google security. And, and that's gotten better over time, too. So... We typically turn on things like two-factor authentication just to make sure things are locked down even tighter. Got it. So um, you have the data living where you want it to live. Then you build with relatively few people who can access it. Then you use AppSheet to build apps against it, and then the security access control mechanisms in AppSheet let you decide which users see which apps. Um, and do you... Um, and when you bring new users into the company and so on, you just add them to the access control. So that sort of gives you your layering. It sounds like um, uh, so that sort of has secured the data almost independently from securing the applications. So the end users have access to the data directly. Correct. And, and we, have, we also apply app sheet filters. So, so in general, foremen will see their own like, you know, safety alerts. They'll see their own dailies. They'll see um, information that's relevant to them. Um, and but as you go up, as you go up the level, the manager levels will see more data. They'll see all the foremen, all the jobs. So we, we even have um, we were able to filter data on a company role basis as well. So okay. now, how do you get um, how do you get insights? into overall how are the apps doing? For example, maybe you had various ideas around things, but some of them got more traction than others. Is it common for you to say, look, I know this needs to be built and you build it, built it once, it's uh, sort of quick and done? Uh, or are, does, is it more of like an evolutionary process that's happening as you, people start using your apps? Um, there's very few cases where it's, it's quick, and, quick and done. We might do like some prototyping where it's quick and done, but Typically, apps will get feedback from the users that use them, and there is this evolution in terms of functionality. So, we have a there are some very active users that we have, and they love to get you know ask for new features. So, we try our best, and, and AppSheet develop you know developing on AppSheet is generally accommodating for making changes, so that's been helpful. Um, but I don't see any of these apps as static; they're always they're always changing. Right. So for a person who might be listening to this conversation and says, um, well, who has maybe a certain frame of mind of how long it takes to 
make a change to an application. So if you've got a version of an app running today, and one of your users comes along and asks for some improvement of feature, gives you some feedback, um, what is, I know it's a sort of on an average, what sort of turnaround time um, does it take for you to put out a new version with potentially a change or maybe in the course of a year, how many changes might you make to an app that you're actively taking feedback on? It can depend on the nature of the changes. Um, there are some things that might just be the reviews of the data that can be implemented the same day. Um, if it requires a database change, then we're a little bit more careful in terms of like the changes we make. But um, in theory, it, it, <laughs> it really is in terms of, you know, it could be minutes to hours to make just about any basic change to the apps. Um, Sometimes testing is important, and uh, we want to be, you know, mindful that that we're adhering to security and that we have the right the right permissions in place. But um, it's pretty amazing to almost make changes live. Uh, so, who makes those changes in in at KLB, Richard? Is is it you? And who who else works on the creation and change of the apps themselves? So. I'm definitely the overall architect, um, and, but in the you know over time we we had different people within the company that also assisted with the app sheets, um, app sheet apps. Originally, it was a project engineer who was creating um, a job site form for one of his projects, and we he doesn't he doesn't make those changes anymore. We kind of adopted it, but um, but we've had we've had people that were dedicated to. Um, to actually creation as well. Um, typically, they're they're elite, you know they might be recruited from 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 college, and so we'll see like a, a lot of app development in the summertime when they have more when they're full time. But um, we've also been able to have people work remotely, especially now during the pandemic. Um, so I keep tabs on all <laughs> all the apps, but. Uh, but you know, it, it's it's a group effort. There's there's probably um, within the company there's there's been a half a dozen people that have touched the apps for development, and we currently have um, another dedicated person that's part time. So. Right. One of the things I found really interesting in our journey along with you is um, that you brought in college interns, and uh, boy, they were smart, um, but they're also fearless. <laughs> and they were really able to build amazing things because they're not constrained by, uh, sometimes us older folk are constrained by, you know, our past expectations, right? We think, oh, it's going to be incredibly complicated to build something. Oh, it's going to take a long time. And whereas um, I was amazed by what some of your interns were able to do. So that was, um, what's interesting is um, folks who were relatively new to the company could build useful applications, but yet you could govern all of it in terms of, um, you could establish, for example, all apps require sign-in. They have to conform to these rules, these policies, and you were able to do that. Um, so it wasn't like you were setting up these, uh, there weren't wild projects running off, but they were governed and you had insight into what was going on. Oh, sure. Like um, the interns have actually been really helpful in driving new applications. Um, sometimes these these projects are, are their own, so it, you can kind of just assign to one person and see where they, where they end up. So last summer we had a, a, a family of apps created to, that was our first group of apps that, that were meant to work outside the company, so not just within KLB. And it was collecting scale ticket data, so scans of scale tickets, material tickets from Pitt's quarries. And so in that scenario we had we had KLB, we had uh, rental trucks, we had the pits and quarries, we had the owners and the, the prime contractors that all had dedicated apps. And that was a pretty impressive project, just just in terms of like one intern who'd been with us various summers. She actually started in high school, so <laughs> we even had some success with some high school folks. And uh, so, and we were able to present that to the um, Washington State Department of Transportation as like, a potential path forward in, in um, removing the collection of paper tickets to digital. So, there, you yeah. know, Washington State has now implemented some uh, changes to their standards procedures allowing for digital collection of scale tickets based on that project. So, um, 
Do you want to touch, touch on anything else or? or oh, anything no, that else? was a, that actually makes a lot of, uh, one of the things we see, um, which has evolved over some time is this sort of partnership between in a company, the partnership between the very uh, tech uh, or IT people, for example, who are setting up the MySQL database in Google Cloud. Uh, and the business users or the not maybe so technically skilled folks, but who understand the business problem trying to solve, they're building an application, they're able to work together to achieve the stuff, you know, achieve the outcomes, um, rather than requiring that everybody have um, uh, be a software engineer in order to build one application. So it's sort of, it's really sort of what you've been de demonstrating is you've got this agility out of folks who are um, in a line of business, like you know, the person who was actually an engineer in the field, um, or whether it's an intern uh, or whether it's an IT person, all able to collaborate in this. So, uh, and yeah, you've got sure. a system that makes it work together. Uh, do you guys like meet regularly to talk about stuff, or how does that work? So, um, in terms of the all, overall app development, there there are regular meetings. They're typically quarterly with the with the executives. Um, in terms of development, it's it's pretty flexible. Um, right now, we're we're working on um, dispatch related apps, so the orders that go to trucking and, dri and drivers, and to the foreman requests. So there have been more meetings for that type of project because um, it's touching folks that we haven't interacted with before, the the truck drivers. We already have a good relationship with the foreman, and the dispatcher kind of is new as well. So, in that regard, we get together every couple of weeks and go over um, the evolution. But they're already seeing, you know, that they can get collect the trucking requests, that they can collect these equipment moves, and um, send notifications out to the drivers. So we put, but in all the other software that we looked at, it was it was just like a blind notifications. Whereas if we are putting the app in these people's hands, we can get bi-directional. So not only do we notify a driver, we can get acceptance of that, of that notice. So that's functionality that we've never even seen before. And, um, and because of there's more people involved, we're having to have what, I mean, I was kind of used to just doing the development, you know, and then, then pushing it out and getting the feedback. In this case, we're actually having to have the, the organizational meetings just to kind of make sure everybody's on the same page. Right. Yeah, it's it's amazing that you notice it when you fall back to what is the norm, which is um, uh, you get used to being able to just build something and test it, and that drives real data-driven feedback. Um, very cool. Um, just sort of, we have just a few more minutes. Um, do you have any advice for other folks who are in IT in the construction industry? Um, uh, you know, it, it's a huge industry all over the world. Um, what you see as sort of the potential in the next, you know, two to three years, and what impact this kind of investment can make in in their operations? Sure, um, it's definitely a question that comes up in our meetings, especially with like the CFO. Like, you know, can you, can you quantify? Um, the value of, of this type of activity information, um, and it's it's difficult. But but knowing that people are you know more productive, they're you know they're entering entering in their information once, and it's available throughout the company. Um, that you know what is the value of knowing what's happening on a job site? Um, I kind of. We had we had this one meeting and uh, we we move a lot of our uh, dirt earth, and the question came up like, how many times do you want to move that dirt? And the answer is once and get paid. And so, how many times do you want to put in the data so that you have access to it? And the more times you're you're doing an activity and repeating yourself, the less efficient you are. So, while it's difficult to quantify. We, we know that we're making better decisions and that we're doing better on our projects qualitatively. That makes sense. If you don't mind, Richard, I'm going to borrow that um, 
that quote from you. So when I say, okay. hey, do you really want to do you really want to be having developers write lots of complex, messy code? How many times do you want to move that dirt, or do you want to define <laughs> it in a no-code fashion? Right. I think that's going to become our new tagline. Yeah, no, it's it's a good visualization because I mean that's that's what we do. We have we have bulldozers, we have excavators. We're we're moving dirt, and we only get paid once to do it. So. Makes sense. That's uh, awesome, Richard. Well, you know, um, as always, it's like been a pleasure talking with you. A ton of insight. I hope you know uh, other folks sort of um, uh, uh, learn from some of the lessons. Actually, you've learned and you've taught us as our customers. So much appreciated, and thank you again. And um, uh, you know, I hope to talk with you again soon about another related topic. Yeah, my pleasure. It's as always, I'm always eager to see what comes next from AppSheet. Um, it's been a great partnership, and uh, really impressed with what you guys have done. Thank you.